This is Open Studio. My name is Tom Purcell, and today we will be discussing employment creation, job opportunities, and skills upliftment in the Cape Peninsula. My guests today are Ronald Bounds, founder and director of DreamWorker, a non-profit organization working in this area in Cape Town, and Tanya Sisan, uh, the office manager of the Athlone office, and uh, I'm given to believe the driving force behind the success of the office over the past few years. Ronald and Tanya, welcome to Open Studio. Nice to have you here this, uh, today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ronald, if I can start with you. Employment creation, job opportunities, skills upliftment has always been, uh, we understand, the domain of government uh, nationally or provincially. But non-profit organizations have had a big role to play in this area in the past. Tell me, what's the history of non-profit involvement in the employment sector, uh, especially in the Cape Town area? Well, I think uh, most people won't believe, but it's in fact very big. It's quite substantial, it's well established. Um, there are lots of non-profit organizations throughout the Western Cape who are doing amazing work. I don't think they have the budget to market themselves, so they never get into the press, and never get kind of the accolades they do get. But there are literally hundreds of organizations, whether they're doing training, skills upliftment, uh, learnerships, or placing like we do directly into work opportunities. Um, the, the, the sector, which we call the, the employment facilitation sector in the Western Cape, is huge and it's well established and um, it, it functions very well and I think creates a, a large contribution towards getting people back into work. I imagine a lot of people are not aware of that, uh, like myself, that we think that it is government's role, but it's interesting to know that uh, organisations like yourself uh, are involved and are at the coalface of, of that sort of thing. Can you tell me um, how did DreamWorker uh, get started? Tell us the history of, of DreamWorker. Well, as you know, you were party to a project that happened in Hart Bay many years ago called Work Now, and based on that success, um, the provincial government said, couldn't we come across to the greater part of the peninsula and open up DreamWorker? And the key was that uh, as part of the poverty allevi alleviation program, DreamWorker um, set about saying, how can we actually help unemployed people at three levels, getting them prepared, helping them focus on where they want to go, and then placing them. Um, and so with uh, provincial government support in 2008, DreamWorker set the, itself up. Um, and for the last four plus almost five years now, we've gone about helping as many, thousands in fact, um, unemployed people back into the workspace. Well, I mean, that's fantastic, and you're, you're doing a good job. How long have you been set up now, did you since, say? Since 2008. Two, okay, so you're five years going now. So you've Correct. been through the growing pains, and Correct. I know there's more growth coming on, and we're going to touch upon that uh, a little bit later. Um, Tanya, now, um, you, you came from a very different area to join this. Well, what's your history, uh, employment-wise, before you came to, to DreamWorker? I spent most all my life in retail, and and that was it. Um, from there, I, I joined DreamWorker in two thousand and nine. Right, and, and what made you leave for these safe confines of of, of uh, retail employment? I think retail it, it gives you a, just a strong, strong ability to to um, drive. You need a strong um, um, energy level commitment. But um, I found my passion, I understood that 20 years has just given me some really, really inner strength in what I really would love to do. Um, and I found that in employment facilitation. I right. have you, you found your passion. I then. found my passion, that's yeah. right. Okay. Um, uh, Ronald, coming back to you, and I'm quite interested, apart from DreamWorker, what other local agencies and organizations um, in, in Cape Town and the Peninsula are involved in this sort of thing and, and how, are they, how are they funded? How do well, they survive? Th it's a great question because unknown to many people there's a couple of um, umbrella organisations. One is called Activa which is run by the City of Cape Town and it actually is the umbrella organisation for a lot of unemployment support. Um, there's an organisation called e, um, EU which is in um, employment support as well and under these um, um, umbrellas there's large organisations, there's Dreamworker, there's uh, Learn to Earn, there's 
Fundi, which used to be men on the side of the road. Um, there's Career Planet, um, there's uh, Young at Work, and there's, uh, I can go on forever, and there's, I think we've, when I, we last put a little matrix together, there were something like 60 organizations in the Western Cape who are training, facilitating, supporting uh, people back into the workspace, part-time, full-time work. So it's quite an established industry, um, but we, we go about our work very quietly. We don't really you know, beat our own drum because there's so much work to do and there's so many unemployed people to attend to. Um, that all of us really flourish and, 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 and actually work very well together. There's no competition in the industry because competition will only happen when we've actually so found um, 500,000 jobs in the, in the Western Cape, and that's going to take some doing. Uh, yes, it's not something that's going to happen tomorrow, is it? Um, although it would be nice to think it, it would happen. I'm interested, um, obviously you guys have to live and eat and, and uh, pay your bills as well. How are organizations like yourselves funded and how sustainable is that funding going forward? How, how can you continue to be a success? It must be a, must be a continual worry uh, for your organization. Of course, you employ um, several people in your business as well. It's the biggest question that we're all facing at the moment. Um, provincial government used to fund us, they don't any longer, and that's a story for another uh, program. Um, they should be funding organizations like the, us and they don't, they, they're trying to run their own programs. So we've gone out and looked for corporate funding and trust funding and foundation funding, which we have achieved. Um, but unfortunately, there's 10 of us chasing one piece of funding at every time we go out and, and put proposals out there. So we, we as a well-established brand, DreamWorker, we, we tend to attract good quality funding and we have to work hard to, to, uh, to get hold of that. Um, so in terms of sustainability, to, uh, the, the most ta challenging part of your question is that um, that funding will eventually dry up, whether it was a government or whether it's corporate funding. And we have to, as a social enterprise, see ourselves as see how we're going to earn income in the future so that we can pay our way while still helping the unemployed. And that's a big challenge we're all facing and one which many of us haven't got answers to yet, but it's a great question. It's really we in that no man's land of we, we got funding from foundations and corporates, um, but it's not, a, it's not assured ever. Yeah. I, w I would imagine that an organization like yourselves is, are, are quite nimble. You, you're lean and mean yes. and nimble, as opposed to government departments and organizations. How uh, you were funded by social development, um, how keen are they still to maybe get involved and, and, and make sure that you do part of their remit, if you like? Well, that's always a challenge because uh, we were sitting in a conference a little while ago where six or seven of us uh, DreamWorker type operations and none of us were funded by provincial government, which is actually quite sad. I think they're doing their own, they've got their own agendas. We know there's still work to do. Um, but no, they aren't coming to the party, in our humble opinion, and they should be supporting us, they're not. Um, and um, we are doing the work they go out and tell everybody they say they're doing, um, which is to reduce poverty, reduce unemployment, uh, and uh, increase job creation. Right. We had the, uh, the Finance Minister's budget speech, uh, I think it was five or six weeks ago. Uh, what came out of that uh, speech that might help, and what was missing from that speech that you'd like to have, to have seen? It's something I've said on many shows and many radio stations uh, for a long time now. I really think that uh, they haven't really got a ministry or an agency that's looking after unemployment in this country. And the sooner they get one done where somebody, some minister and some budget is responsible for helping unemployed um, organizations, helping the unemployed, um, everybody's doing little bits and it's never come together as one full strategy. And I think that's missing from the budget. Mm. And hopefully, well, you'll, you and uh, your colleagues in that yeah. area well, can, did you, do you get an opportunity to lobby for that sort of thing? How close are you to government? Can you yeah. get in there and uh, do you have the ear of anyone influential? I think we're trying that process now. Uh, we realise we haven't got the ear of provincial government um, as, as, lo as strongly as we should and we are trying to get lobbying and, and bodies together to try and actually go to the highest level at, at, at national government and that's where we see um, the possibilities lying in the future. But it's still, um, everybody's doing unemployment, but no, nobody's doing it properly. Mm. Right. Yeah. Tanya, now um, DreamWorker has a way of doing things. People don't just turn up to your office, give their name and ID number, and uh, then you sort of find them a job. You have a process that you go through, which is quite unusual, I think. Could you, could you, um, uh, share with us what it is that you do, which is, which is about the, the success of 
the organization and how you've managed to, to really do a great job yourselves. It's quite unusual what, um, how you go through that. Could you, could you share that with us? What sets us apart is our personal engagement with each and every candidate. So we b express to them the day's need of, of us assisting them, most importantly them helping themselves. We screen them, we interview, we personally interview each and every candidate. We go through their CVs, um, you know, we give them personal counselling, we do soft skills, body language, we understand them as a, as a person, as a human being, we identify strengths in them that they may or may not know. And once we have all of this information, we then work on their behalf. References are very important. In the workplace today, employers need to know that they come recommended. So we, 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 ref we find references on their behalf, we contact, but most importantly, we, we um, oh gosh, we counsel each and every one of them. Right. So um, they understand what it is they're, they're, they're going into. I, th I, I believe that you, know, you, you, you sort of start with you know, what is it you'd like to do? What, you know, what is your sort of dream? Is, is, is there that kind of process as well? We, to try and drill down to what it is that they feel that they would be good at? And There's a difference in what they've just been doing all their life and what they think they're good at. But what we base our organization on is their dream and, you know, what the passion really is like. And if they understand who they are as a being, you know, um, um, that drives the purpose the purpose and that's where we actually base our organization on the dream for their life and how we can help them in a work opportunity but in what they're really really passionate about right and uh, do you place people in um, jobs not only presumably full-time but I mean if somebody needs a job for a day um, I'm, I'm trying, to, trying to think off the top of my head guarding cars at a party or something no, like that definitely. Or, or, you know so as long as if they get a day's work it's it's important to, to, to any them and their form family. Of work, mm. Tom, any form of work gardening domestic work parking a car you can have a party and you need some wait waitresses any form of work um, we definitely definitely and that's the way to go you, you can hate small opportunities earning opportunities and we build on that Okay, well, it sounds fantastic. Ronald, um, not just job creation uh, and employment, but skills upliftment. This is an area that uh, we know about from, from previous encounters. Um, people are already in jobs or that they've got a particular skill. What about skills development? Um, wh where does that play a part in the ongoing fight to, to um, um, curb unemployment and reduce the rates? Of, uh, of the unemployed numbers? Great question. Um, and I think the skills development's a bit of misunderstood because I think all the budgets, particularly for youth, uh, for coming from government, is all about um, putting people through training courses and then they sit there, they've been trained for six months to a year, or even longer, and they've got nothing to do. So we've canvassed the, 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 the worker placement community or the, the employers, and they've come back to us generally. Um, not all of them, but generally said, we want attitude. We don't want a person who's skilled as a machinist or me uh, uh, mechanic. Um, we really want people who are going to come into an organization and, and, and bring themselves in. So we built our own little program, which is soft skills called the Dream Diamond, which, and, and I'm supporting what Tanya said. The four corners of that Dream Diamond is what is the dream you have for your life? What is your purpose that you think you're here in this life to actually achieve? Um, what is your contribution towards that and how are you going to self-inspire? So the contribution is very powerful that people walk into us and say, I want a job. And then everybody starts to think, how do we skill them for that job? Our question is, what contribution do you want to make? And where do you see yourself contributing in the future? And with that contribution, that guides us into more soft skills. So a lot of organizations say, give me somebody who's got attitude, who's got passion, who's got fire in the belly. Um, and who wants to, who's keen to start from the bottom up and learn and we'll train them, we'll do the skills. You don't need to send us anybody who's trained. And that's been a huge turnaround in the last couple of years for us that we do a lot of that soft skills, passion, 
purpose, dream, contribution, and that puts them more elevated into a space to walk into an organization and contribute. And then they can get the skills that they need within the organization. So most organizations are saying, we've got the skills, we'll train them, but you bring the really quality people to us. Well, I'm delighted to hear that employers are taking that mm. attitude. H hire the attitude, train the skills. That's, it that's always, a, um, I, I always smile, but a, a, a sort of a, a wry smile, really, when I see uh, a sign up in a, in a restaurant or a coffee bar saying, experienced waitrons required apply within yes why not inexperienced waitrons we will train you wouldn't that make you can smile so and have got great attitude yeah yeah exactly. absolutely no. because the the waitrons experienced waitrons are just coming from somewhere else that they've been sacked or they had a bad <laughs> exactly. attitude or something like <laughs> and that they've got bad habits so i'm delighted to hear that that uh, more and more employers are taking that on and you know we will train them we will put the time and the effort into training them. Tanya, tell me, um, we are a multilingual society, uh, all the official languages. How is, what part does language play a part in um, the success or otherwise of, of, of a, a, an employee, a potential employee coming through your doors and then uh, making their way out into the workforce? Our experience is, Tom, that English is the commercial language and our expression to our candidates are that um, you know they need to be able to understand an application form, understand and express himself in an interview. Um, with difficulty we do understand that there is a barrier in languages and we do in our forms, we facilitate in COSA as well. Um, so we do try and understand that there is a barrier in, in language. Um, at some point in any of our interviewing counselling sessions, we do then get an interpreter just to assist. But English is the commercial language, so everything is done in English. And there'll be some jobs where, where language is not as important no, definitely as in not. other jobs. No, definitely but, not. But definitely a, a, a grasp of English is, is, is most, pretty important. Yeah, important. Yes, mm -hmm. okay. Well, uh, that's interesting to know as well, and you go through all that with the, with yeah. the guys when they, when they come to see you. Um, tell us about some of yours. You've been going for five years. Uh, what about some of your success stories? Uh, there's a McDonald's story, is that right? Oh, yes, yeah, yes. Oh, gosh, we've just we've facilitated two of the new branches in Weinberg and Lansdowne Road. Mm -hmm. um, just really fun to see the, at, the atmosphere, the vibrancy when people come out there and, and actually know that there is some form of hope, you know? So um, we've had some success. I think 120 were successful we're not, um, with the two branches. Um, and we've got Burger King we're busy with, so we, we're getting into Burger King as well the new Burger King coming to Cape Town, but there are so much success and there is work opportunities out there for people who want to want to work. And, and just on a, on, a, on a broader basis, you know, our small organization, which is one small office with seven or eight people in Athlone and a few people in, in um, uh, Atlantis, we, we facilitate about 14,000 days of work a month. Um, so our last year we facilitated almost 150,000 days in one year. Uh, and that over the last, uh, when you add it up over the last four and a bit years, we've put um, uh, about 350 or 360,000 days worth of work back into the hands of the employed. And when you work at an average daily rate, um, and a very small average daily rate, that's put about 40 million rands worth of wages back into the hands of the employed. And that's just from our small office. We believe we can do it better. We believe we just started. Um, but we're showing success that we are placing people and 60% um, of those placements are in part-time casual work. Mm -hmm. So that's where the opportunity lies for the young people coming through now. Find part-time work, find casual work and then get into the economic stream and, and, and show yourself from there. And um, what else? I always feel that um, people should, if they can, um, go further. Just do, do more than you're asked to do. No, do you... Do you um, you know, some people will come into your office and they're, they're, they want to get going. And they're, In terms of attitude, is there a, and I'm asking a, a little bit of a loaded question here, either one of you um, come back to me on that. Is there a, 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 a go-get attitude here um, in Cape Town? I mean, we are, uh, you know, we're called, it's the mother city because it takes nine months to get anything done. 
Um, you know, it, do, are we a bit more laid back than, than our brothers and sisters in Hateng? Uh, what, is the, what is the general attitude towards work? Are you finding that people are, um, are more uh, willing to really get out there and, and do it? Or is there still a little bit of, you know, well, whatever, you know? Well, we've got a subtle screening process. It's, you know, it's our filter that, that when given the application form, um, you wouldn't want to hear this figure, but two in five don't come back. It's too much like hard work. So we really screened out the lazy people. And then we invite them once they've been through the process and a couple of engagements. Tanya runs a worker readiness program and we invite them on. We don't, we don't say, please, you must come. We say it's a voluntary thing. And those who have gone through our process and then gone on to the worker readiness, they just jump the queue because suddenly they, they're top of mind with us. They've shown their go-getter attitude and they get placed. So. The people that we find out do walk the, the, the yards with us and do actually put in a little bit of effort, they're the ones who get placed sooner than anybody else. Mm -hmm. So I can't really compare to Joburg or anybody else, but the people who do show that effort are the ones who get the jobs quicker than anybody That's else. There's quite a so. high uh, proportion of people that, uh, that, that get screened out. Yep. I mean, two out of five, that's 40% if my maths are, are, are correct. correct. So um, that's, that, that's quite interesting, isn't it, that, it, that, that, uh, that many um, don't make it to... to um, move on to it the shows program. You att attitude component is yeah. probably closer to 60% yeah. than 100% right. in people. Yeah? Attitude determines altitude. Uh, exactly. Is that right? Well, um, uh, you've come a long way, obviously, in the five years, and it's, it's fabulous. You've, uh, th there's a lot more that DreamWorker is getting involved in now. Now, Tanya, there's, uh, some new offices have opened or are about to open. Do you want to briefly tell us about that? Fantastic. We've opened Atlantis. They're up and going, really some fantastic movement there, mm. and Port Shipston as well. So they've also stopped registering, very excited to do the work out there. So we've really, really grown. So both those offices are open? Now. Yes. Yeah. And so yes. Athlone is the, is the um, global office. headquarters. The mothership. Of, <laughs> the, mother, <laughs> the mothership. Uh, I've seen some of your photographs on your website. You, you, you're obviously a, 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 an office and an organization that has fun as well. It's yeah, not just yeah. about <laughs> head down and hard work yeah. um, all the time. But the, there's other stuff going on you've shared with me uh, previously, uh, Ronald. Um, other projects, other people you're getting phone calls all the time. Just, just share with us some of the other um, uh, sort of non-core stuff that is, uh, may be landing on your desk soon. Yeah, I think we're in an incredibly uh, vibrant growth phase because besides the three offices we've just mentioned, we are going to start a program, a field worker program, where we're going to hopefully cover the peninsula with field workers um, and, and places as far as field as Hart, uh, Hart Bay, Halderberg, Mitchell's Plain, Northern Peninsula all to support the central office in Athlone. Um, and that program is going to look at helping our uh, register people find work for the unemployed, as well as our Link of Love program, which is our work creation program, which is working beautifully in schools for unemployed parents. Um, we're looking at a program where we're going to possibly be supported by the European Union. And we also got some learnership programs coming through from the CETAs. Um, and then getting calls every every day from Gauteng and Durban and why aren't we there yet? So there's mm. lots of good growth for us and we really want to make a difference. You know, we, s we spent lots of hours together and my passion is mm. to have everybody in this country working at some point in my lifetime and, and have zero unemployment. So that's our yeah. it's our ultimate goal. Well, you're only in your mid-twenties. You've got exactly. time to go. Exactly, <laughs> Ronald. So we could see DreamWorker as a national brand yeah. quite soon. Absolutely. How do people get in touch uh, with DreamWorker and uh, get on to your, to your program and, and, and what have you, uh, Tanya? Okay, um, our contact number is 021-6964048 or our website is www.dreamworker.org.za. Right, and your office? We based Roughly in where it is? Central in Athlone. Yes. Athlone railway line, we're right opposite. Right, so guys should be able to no, find it's it very quite easily. And you can download an application form off our website. Yes. And if you want to contact us via email, it's info at dreamworker.org.za. Yeah. Okay, plenty of ways to get hold yep. of you. Bang <laughs> the door down. That's no, absolutely, definitely. we will welcome you with open arms. Yes, absolutely. Um, well, it's great to have you here and you're, you're doing fantastic work. And uh, I'm, I'm sure that you will continue to do that. Um, thank you very much for coming in today. It'd be, uh, we'd like to have you back at some point in the future. Would you come that'll, back and that'll be tell great. us how you're, how you're getting on? We'd love to do that. Thank you. That's uh, absolutely brilliant. Well, thank that's you, it for today for um, Open Studio. If you would like to present a future edition 
of Open Studio on Cape Town Television, we'd be delighted to hear from you. Send us an email to openstudio at capetowntv.org.za or you can telephone the studio 021 488 I'll repeat those details because we'd love to hear from you. Get in touch with us by email openstudio at capetowntv.org.za or call us here at the studio on 021 488 My name is Tom Purcell. You have been tuned to Open Studio. Join us every weekday afternoon at 5 o'clock. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Cheerio. Bye for now.